Olivia and the School Carnival. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a good one. In a few days, our class is going to be hosting Parents' Night, said Mr. Hagenmuller. Let's put our thinking caps on and come up with some fun activities for the evening. Harold, do you have any ideas, she asked. Well, we can have a finger painting party and only you paint with your feet, he said. Thank you, Harold. I'll keep that in mind, Mrs. Huggenmuller said. Anyone else? Olivia, do you have an idea? Hmm. We could make our own carnival, Olivia said. We could have games and rides and prizes. Well, of course, Olivia's classmates loved her idea and kind of so did Mrs. Huggenmuller. What a fantastic idea, she said. And Olivia, I'd love for you to be in charge, with my supervision, of course. Olivia imagined what it would be like to be the ringmaster of a carnival. Step right up, everyone, and come see the best, the biggest, and the most fun carnival ever made. Ringmaster, Olivia shouted to the excited crowd. The next day at school, Olivia placed her classmates in groups of three to make up her own, you know, their own booths and games for the carnival. Well, how is ring toss game coming along? Olivia asked Francine's group. Uh, sorry, Olivia, Francine said. I decided the ring toss was too boring. So we changed it to the pin the nose on the clown game. I like that a lot, Olivia said. But what if you did something like... Olivia leaned in a little close and whispered so Francine could hear her. What a great idea, Francine said. Hmm, I wonder what that's going to be. Next, Olivia visited Julian's group. She stared at the brightly colored tunnel in front of her and wondered what it was. We like to call it the Rolly Twisty Tunnel Ride, Connor explained. Watch. Julian crawled inside the tunnel and Connor and Daisy rolled it back and forth across the floor. And of course, when the ride was over, Julian could barely stand up straight. I'm not so sure about this one, Julian said. It makes me kind of dizzy. Ooh, well, it looks fun to me, Olivia said. But might be even more fun if you tried. And she whispered, so only Daisy, Connor, and Julian can hear. All three of them loved her idea. And they couldn't wait to try it. Wow, I wonder what it's going to be. Well, finally, Olivia checked in in Harold's group. She saw a frog sitting in the middle of a bunch of toys. Um, so your attraction is the world's largest frog, Olivia asked. Yeah, see how it works? He looks so big next to these toys. Well, before Olivia could say another word, the frog jumped and sat right on Harold's head. Harold turned and asked Alexandria, He won't be doing that on the parents' night, will he? My mom freaks out about frogs. Your attraction is really great, Olivia said, but I wonder if this might make it even better. Psst, 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 psst. She leaned in close to whisper. Can you whisper your idea again, Harold asked. It's hard to pay attention when there's a frog on your head. Well, Olivia took the frog off of Harold's head and whispered her suggestion right into his ear. And, of course, he loved it. When class was over, Mrs. Hagenmuller spoke to Olivia. Olivia, everyone is so thrilled with your suggestions, she said, and it looks like you're doing an excellent job as the carnival director. Well, thank you, Mrs. Hogenmuller, Olivia replied. And how is uh, your own special attraction coming along? Mrs. Hogenmuller asked. Well, I have lots of ideas, but I haven't decided which one is really, really a special attraction. Well, Mrs. Hogglemuller smiled. Well, why don't you, dear? Don't you worry, dear. Great ideas have ways of just kind of sneaking up on you. That's true. On her way home, Olivia imagined she was surrounded by reporters with microphones and cameras. Olivia, can we see your extra special top secret attraction now? Asked one reporter. Oh, yes, Olivia. What's under the sheet? Asked another. Only soon to be most talked about, most pictures taken of, world famous, most amazing attraction ever built, Olivia said. Show us, Olivia, begs a third reporter. Sorry, but it's not ready for the public yet. You'll have to come back tomorrow at parents' night. Hmm, this is going to be interesting. 
Well, that night, Olivia told her parents about her project. She showed her dad the sketches that she had made of all her ideas. Okay, Dad, here's how my extra special project's going to work. Olivia's father looked at all the sketches carefully. Hmm, classic design, very scientific. It pushes, it pulls. You just might need a little help. Well, Olivia's brother, Ian, Ian walked into the living room. He was holding his favorite toy robot. Ian began speaking to the, in a robot voice. Why don't you ask the boy standing next to you? <laughs> Ian asked in his best robot voice. Okay, you can help, Olivia said. Ian turned to his parents. See you later, parents of robot boy. <laughs> That's pretty good. The big night finally arrived and Mrs. Hoggemuller greeted the parents. Welcome to parents' night. Olivia beamed. Thank you, Mrs. Hoggemuller. Folks, follow me to view our first attraction, which was made by Francine, Oscar, and Otto. It's the one, the only amazing clown bee mag toss. Would someone care to try it? Well, the next Olivia walked over to what used to be the rolly t twisty tunnel ride. Here we have a beach, beach ball bowling, announced Olivia. Announced. All you have to do is throw the ball through the tunnel and out the other side and knock down these bowling pins. Julian, will you demonstrate? Everybody cheered for Julian to make a strike. That's kind of cool. Well, Olivia walked over to the next attraction. And step this way, ladies and gentlemen, and see the most strange animal of all times. It's the last living dinosaur, the Frogosaurus. Watch it climb up that tall building. Well, Harold stood behind the model of the Empire State Building and let Frogosaurus go. He hopped up on the building with... And then right <laughs> on his head again. It's okay, Mom. He doesn't bite, Harold said. And finally, for our last attraction, Olivia said, said Welcome to Olivia's Spectacular Fun House. Well, she pointed to the fun house behind her. It couldn't have done it couldn't have done it without my little brother Ian. And of course he peeked his head from out behind the flap on the fun house. She's right. She couldn't have. <laughs> Olivia stood in front of the funhouse mirrors. Now watch carefully as the Hall of Mirrors transforms an ordinary boy into the amazing robot boy. And Ian placed his toy robot in front of the mirrors. The mirrors made Ian's toy robot look huge. And now it really did look like a robot boy. All the parents laughed and cheered. Well, Mrs. Hoggemuller walked over next to Olivia. Great job, everyone, she said. Parents enjoy the carnival. How fun is that? Well, that night when her mom tucked her into bed, Olivia was so sleepy, super happy, though, I bet. I really wanted to show you my idea for the carnival booth, Olivia said. Of course, Olivia's mom smiled. I would love to look at your idea in the morning, but my, my idea glows in the dark. It's really best that we talk about it now. Your idea will still be there in the morning. Good night, Olivia. Sweet dreams, honey. Ah, good night, Mom. Thanks for reading with me. The end.